How's it going everybody? In this video I'm going to show you what a trunk link is on network switches. So a trunk link is a connection between two network devices, whether they're switches or routers, that's carrying tag traffic. And I'll explain this. So the only connection that I have set up already that I'm not going to show you is the trunk link that I have going to the router. These two switches are going to have two VLANs on them each. They're going to have VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. And I want to illustrate how these trunks are typically used in the industry. So we're going to go back to a scenario that I introduced in the last lesson, Bob's Grocery Store. So Bob's Grocery Store got a network upgrade. They got new racks installed. They got some newer-ish uh, network equipment, Cisco and they want to extend the back office network to the upstairs as well you know that Bob's grocery store is doing pretty good it's one of those double decker grocery stores and there's a back office on the downstairs for people to you know keep up with inventory and there's a back office on the upstairs for people to keep up with in inventory and all those other administrative tasks so the first floor switch is right here. The second, the second floor switch is right here. So we're just going to you know, pretend that this switch is in another, in another floor uh, round, mounted to another rack, where this switch is, is going to be on its own rack with its own set of equipment. Usually in the industry, that's how it's working. Now, we want to use the same VLAN, VLAN 10, for the back office network. So VLAN 10 and 20 have already been created on both these switches. So in the industry, if you're gonna try to extend the same VLAN across multiple switches, no matter what floor they're on, you need to have VLANs configured. But the thing that I'm gonna specifically show you how to set up today is the trunk. So what we have to do first, and this is what I recommend when you're setting up VLANs, when you're setting up trunking, any of that, is first, you know, you get your plan, your diagram. You know, as they say, proper planning prevents poor performance. Plan before, have your diagram, know where you're connecting. So the first thing we're going to do is, is layer one. We're going to make our physical connections. We've already got one to the router. Now, I want you to help me in the comments. If I am using gigabit 02, and I want that to be the trunk between my floors so that switch one and switch two can communicate with each other, where would I connect? I'll show you now, but I, I want you to challenge yourself so to, uh, to try to think of this on your own. So I'm going to plug in right here. This is gigabit 02. And you always want your trunks to be the fastest connection on the network. So this isn't even that fast compared to some of the fiber connections that exist out there. Uh, open up a tab and Google like fiber connections on switches. You'll see like 10 gigs and more, the speed. So we're going to connect between the switches. You'll notice those connections are coming up right away. That's because switches are normally plug and play where routers, you got to turn the ports on. But we don't have a trunk configured yet. So that's where I'm going to show you how to configure the trunks. But first, let's connect our PCs. So I've got my laptop over here. You can see the top of it. I've got it over here. This is going to be on floor two. So this is one of the back office computers on floor two. But we want it to be in VLAN 10. VLAN 10 is taking up ports 1 through 12. So I'm going to plug that in. And in real life, this might be for the employees' workstations, could be for voice over IP phones, uh, all the things in their office, right? The same is true for floor, uh, so floor 2 we got going. Floor 1, so we got some people down on floor 1. They're going to need their connections. We're just using one laptop at this time to test. But, you know, we're, you always want to test with at least two devices. 
And then once those work, then you move into deploying the larger groups of hosts. So in this case, um, I'm going to connect floor one, which I've also happened to configure VLAN 10 on, and it has ports one through 10 uh, in VLAN, I'm sorry, one through 12 on VLAN 10 as well. So we're gonna see that come up. That should come up as well. We see the light turning on and it's up. Now we're going to move over to this. Um, we're going to go into floor two switch first and we're going to configure the trunk. So I'll see you over there. Okay, so now we've got, we're on our host, we're configuring the switch and we want to get this switch with a trunk link going to this switch. And in order to do that, as we did, uh, as we talked about a few minutes ago or seconds ago, I moved, I, I made a connection from this switch on Gigabit Ethernet 02 to Gigabit Ethernet 02 on the other switch. So I'm going to connect a console cable because I don't have SSH set up. I will show you how to set up SSH and make it much easier than what I'm doing now in a future video. But for now, let me just connect this. I made the connection. And now we are on the second floor switch. And the second floor switch is going to be where we're going to configure that trunk. So I'm going into global configuration mode. And then I'm going to go to int G02. And I'm going to type these, this command, simple as that, switch port mode trunk, enter. We're putting that, tr uh, that port into trunking mode. It, came, it went down and came back up again, as we saw by the logs. And then we're going to explicitly define which trunks, or I'm sorry, we're going to explicitly define which VLANs are going to be allowed across the trunk link. When I think of trunks, I think of them as like toll bridges. And you're only allowed if your VLANs tag is on the list, right? So I'm gonna do switch port, trunk, allow, VLAN 10 comma 20. We only want those two across. Now this could be a good form of layer two segmentation at this point, where if you believe that there's a VLAN that doesn't need to connect to a certain switch or get to a certain segment of your network, you can actually exclude it from that allow list and traffic won't even be trunked across the link. So I'm gonna type exit and I'm gonna do a command, remember as I have been reminding y'all, configure and confirm. Always make sure as you go. So I'm gonna do show int trunk and yep, we are, there we go, we got our trunks. And it looks like our VLANs 10 and 20 are allowed across that trunk. Cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to this switch right here, floor 1. So I'm going to go back here, grab this console cable, move it to the other switch. And in real life, this might mean I'm connecting to an access server that already has console connections into it. And you can Google what an access server is. Um, also, um, I would, if I didn't have an access server, I would be walking back down to that switch and actually making that connection with my laptop. So, you know, when we talk about SSH, if you don't already know what it is, you'll see why it's so important that, you know, you set that up on switches so that you can remotely connect to them from where you're, wherever you're at. But... Let's continue with this. Now I'm on the first floor. You should see it change switch dash first floor. The naming conventions of switches, in my opinion, you should, you should have somewhere in there an indicator of where they are in, in, in your organization and building and where they are on the rack. Because as you can see, this network sandwich right here, it's got a bunch of stuff, you know, a bunch of equipment uh, stacked. So it can be hard to know what's what, especially if you don't have labels on them. But if you have a good naming convention and labels, 
it can really make it easier to find devices, especially in the heat of a moment where all you know, all you know what is breaking loose, and um, you need to troubleshoot things quickly. So we're going into global config mode. I made sure to connect to gig zero two on this switch as well, but you're gonna have to pay careful attention to that in the real world. Is what connections are going where? And then G02, I'm going to do basically the same commands I just did. Switch port mode trunk and switch port trunk allow VLAN 10, 20. And I'm going to exit and do show in trunk. And we're going to see, yep, it's trunking VLAN 10 and 20. How do I know that this is working? One thing I haven't shown uh, in this video is I set up DHCP on this router beforehand and I trunk to the router. In, in the next video, I'm gonna show you what I did on this router. But for now, just know DHCP's on this router. There's a trunk link from this switch going here so that DHCP can reach both, both VLANs. So if my connections are all right and my configurations are all right, this PC should receive an IP address on the 192.168.10 network and that Mac, so the, the PC on the first floor, should receive an IP address from 192.168.10 as well. Because in this particular scenario, we're testing if, remember, two, two different uh, devices on different floors can be connected to the same VLAN uh, using trunking. So we should get those same IPs. So I'm going to test this on... My Windows system by doing CMD, opening that up. I'll make sure you can see it. IP config. Let's see. We don't have one. We're getting an APIPA. Remember what the APIPA does? Uh, APIPA is a self assigned IP address or automatic private IP addressing, and it essentially tells us our computer did not get an IP address from DHCP, so we need to troubleshoot. In this case, I know that I just need to go ahead and do a re uh, renew because I did a release before I started the video. So I'm gonna do renew, and we're gonna wait on that. It should be doing the Dora process. It's gonna request the IP address from another machine. Let's see. Or from the server on the network. Sorry, my trackpad's acting crazy. And it looks like we did receive one. How do I know? I got a 10.3 address. So what I'm going to do is now move on over to the Mac. And we're going to make sure that we get a 192.168.10 address over on the Mac as well. Which means we got to walk down some stairs. Alright, so now I'm back downstairs. I'm on uh, floor one switch. We've got the trunk configured as I showed. And... Now we just want to make sure that we're actually in VLAN 10 and I'm going to do that by going into the network settings on the Mac and we're going to go and check and make sure. Yeah, so right there you see using DHCP I always like to go manual, basically release renew and just make sure it works. So that's basically requesting another one and I got dot two. And we have successfully set up a, tr a basic trunk link between two switches that allows us to be on two machines to be on the same network, but they're not on the same switch. They're in the same VLAN, but they're not on the same switch. And just as a recap of how these everything's connected, I'll grab y'all, come over here and check this out. You've, you know, you've got what I didn't show is the configuration of the router. That'll be in the next video. But just so you know, G00 is going to G01. That This G01 on floor 2 switch is a trunk. And then G02 is a trunk going to floor 1 on uh, G02. I actually did it on G02 as well because G01 is going to the router. So G02 trunk to G02 allowing VLANs 10 and 20 and I've got 
my laptop, which you see the light has come turned off since I, I closed the laptop, but you know, it port one through twelve ha are in VLAN ten on here. Ports one through twelve are on VLAN ten up here. So this trunk is, is essentially like a toll bridge allowing VLANs 10 and 20. Now if I tried to have a VLAN 30 and I didn't allow it across this trunk and I had a 30 down here too, we wouldn't have connection between those, those devices. So that is trunking, just the basics of it. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video and don't forget to keep learning.